Welcome back. Finishing where we started in part one, we're going to talk about the lovely viewport, uh, which I feel is a uh, an underrated, unsung uh, part of uh, of Blender 2.8. I, I want to like scream it from the rooftops, like the viewport is amazing, and uh, and and I don't hear a lot of people talking about it. So. Um, so most people would like you would notice like when you open up 2.8 that the viewport looks different like feels different but what exactly has changed so let's as an example this is 2.79 and i'm going to add in a plane here and we've got this cube okay now the cube is obviously intersecting the plane okay now if i move the cube up is it still intersecting the plane we don't know. We would have to look underneath it and go, ah, yes, it is, okay? And then we would have to move it up and then down. And if we're lucky, we might just get a faint little line and we go, okay, yeah. So I guess it's resting on top now, okay? So now let's look at that in 2.8. If we add in a plane here, select our cube. And let me just, uh, for this quick demonstration, disable the, uh, the grid. Now with our cube here selected, it's very easy to see that the cube is intersecting the plane because we've got this faint outline. And as we move it up, it's super easy to tell that it's intersecting, okay? We don't need to look underneath it to tell this because we can see it through it. And we've actually even got a faint little gray outline there just to indicate where things are touching, okay? So I can move it up and down. I can go right, that's the right place. Um, so that's really handy. And you'll see this in the, uh, the wireframe mode as well. So if I uh, hold down Z and you'll actually see this little pop up here, and this is where you get your options for, uh, for wireframe. Previously it was a toggle where you just hit Z and it would go back and forth between them. So solid and wireframe. So in wireframe mode, you can see as I move this cube up and down, very easy to tell. I've got that little outline and maybe if I demonstrate it on a cone, it's even easier to see, right? really handy there. So speaking of wireframe, let's talk about um, when, you ed when you're editing something, okay, in edit mode. So let me go back to 2.79. Let me add in something a little bit more complex, a sphere. Okay, so if I edit this and I'm in wireframe mode, um, let's say I wanted to select this face that is facing me right now, okay? So I might go like this and it's very common to accidentally select a vertice on the wrong side of the mesh. Everybody's done it. Most of us, countless times, right? Now, the reason that this is happening is that the, the weight of this mesh, everything has the same visual weight. The size of those little vertices, um, the, the edge lines, everything has the same visual weight. So it's very, it's very easy to accidentally click the wrong thing without realizing until you move the camera and then you go, oh, whoops that one, right? In 2.8, let's go add a UV sphere. If we edit this, you'll probably notice that it's a little easier to understand the mesh. Now, and the reason for that is that when, uh, when you've got vertices on the other side of the mesh, you can see depth. You can see a very slight fade effect um, which tells you that it's on the other side of the mesh. So it's, it's really subtle, but it enables you to very quickly understand what you're looking at without even realizing it. Like it, it, it's just there, it's happening, and you're just able to work a lot faster because you're not clicking the wrong thing without realizing so many times. Um, so that's, that's a really cool feature. Okay, so that was solid view and, and wireframe mode, um, but we've also now got something else called X-ray mode which I love, honestly. It's, uh, to me, it feels like the best of both worlds. It feels like you've got um, wireframe as well as solid view. Like it's just easy to tell the shape of all the objects in your scene. You can tell when they're, they're intersecting. Um, I'm working on this kitchen scene at the moment and I love it. It's just really easy to, uh, to understand it. Um, and I've actually got it in my Pi menu here when you hold down Z um, as toggle X-ray. And if you wanna turn that on, um, it's just here, extra shading pie menu items, and then you'll be able to quickly access it. And that, by the way, is also viewable in uh, in wireframe mode. If you go toggle X-ray, you can actually see, so if you really only wanna click, you know, what you're looking at, 
then it's really easy. You won't even get the stuff on the other side. So that's uh, that's really cool. Now let's talk about overlays. Okay, so um, let me just uh, turn off X-ray. Okay, so this is all your your options here. So this is what you're looking at on your screen. So I turned off grid before. So let me turn those back on again. Okay, so this gives you a lot more options for like disabling things that you don't want to see right now. So you could disable all the, you know, parenting lines, all that kind of thing. Get rid of the outline if you don't want to. It's all fully customizable. I personally just like keeping them on. You could turn on wireframe for all your objects if you wanted to. Um, uh, the one that I really love to use is just uncheck it. Like that little button there will just disable everything. It like toggles between them. That is fantastic. Like when you're working on a scene and you just want to see like creatively, like how does it look in the you know rest of the scene? How does it look with uh, with my lighting, everything like that? You can just turn on and off the overlays. Um, speaking of which, um, if we're in the cycles rendering engine, which uh, we'll get to EV soon, don't worry, we'll get there. But uh, when you're in the cycles rendering engine um, and you're in rendering mode, in Blender 2.79, when you were in uh, rendered mode, you couldn't see the other objects. You couldn't see, you couldn't select that lamp as an example. And it was really annoying to have to jump out of it, click the lamp, then go back into cycles just so that I can move my lamp around, right? Really annoying. Well, now it's still there, right? We've got all the overlays are still on. If I want to turn them off, I can just by clicking that, but they're now all there. So it's like, it's just so wonderful to not have to like jump in and out of render mode just so that I can click on something. Um, so that's, that's honestly, it's really fantastic. I love that. Uh, we've also got uh, the ability to uh, change the visibility of objects based on their type. So I can hide all of the meshes. I can hide um, all of the lights. Um, it's really handy when you've got a specific thing you're looking for or you've got things that are crowding your way like you got too much mesh and you want to be able to just find an empty way in the back there you can just quickly hide all the mesh and then bring it back without having to go over here to the outliner and select each one one by one or like try and filter through here um, although you can still do that and that's improved um, and you can also you've got collection visibility um, so that's just a quick way to toggle on and off I mean pretty similar to what's over here but I guess um, hang on Let's just add in a bunch of different collections. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it, it's a quick way of just sort of accessing all the different collections uh, from this point instead of going through here and trying to find them. So that's pretty handy as well. Um, and as well as this, we now have shading options. Uh, you get a bunch of options for changing how things look in the viewport. Um, nothing to do with the renderer, just the viewport. So for example, if you click on this sphere here, you can change the default lighting that it lights the viewport with okay again nothing to do with the viewport just there so it's got some some presets there you can also change the rotation of it by clicking that little button and then uh rotating around there um i typically just use it on the default right here just because i'm used to that uh, you have also got matte cap okay so matte cap is something that blender has had for a while um but previously in 2.79 it was hidden in the properties way down here and it was, yeah, it was a little, <laughs> a little annoying to access and uh, probably impossible for beginners to stumble upon. So now it's there, which is, uh, which is a lot easier. Matcap's really good for, for sculpting because it helps you to understand the shape of a mesh. Um, but typically I just, I just work in studio. You also have flat, which is a new type of lighting which uh, can be good just to understand the silhouette of shapes, um, how things relate in size to other things, if you wanted to see that. Um, so really it's just like for seeing the visual weight of things. So composition, it might be handy. Um, I haven't really found a use for it yet myself, but I'm sure I will at some point. Um, then also you've got the color of things. Okay, so you could change the color to be a, a single color of everything in it. Again, nothing to do with the renderer, just the viewport, um, so you could change that there. Um, by default, it's gonna use whatever the material is. Um, so much like 2.79, it would be uh, material, whatever is in viewport display color, right? Um, so yeah, so there's that. You can also have random, 
Okay, so what this is doing, this is new. Um, if you've got a bunch of objects, so I hit Shift R and just repeat that, it's giving each of them a random color. So that can be helpful if you've got, you know, imagine a scene with rocks and plants and trees and things. You just want to be able to see which ones are separate objects. That might be one uh, to use, random. Texture, haven't used texture yet myself. Um, I don't actually know what it's doing. I believe it's probably similar to material, um, but it's going to be using a texture where there is a texture, right? Right? Yeah, there's no like texture options there. So I believe, I don't actually know. I haven't, I haven't really found a use for texture yet. Um, you also have options for your background. Okay, so this is the background there. By default, it's gonna use whatever is in the theme, which is gray. Uh, world is gonna use whatever is in your world settings here, right? So if that was blue or whatever, it would update that. Um, or you can give it a custom color just here so that you can select it for your viewport, right? So you could go all disco-y with that. I, again, I just keep it on whatever the theme is. X-ray, we already talked about, there's that. You also have shadow, okay? So shadow is something totally by itself. It's not to do with this. Originally, I thought it was to do with this, um, but when you adjust the rotation of this, I, uh, did I mention that? Yeah, you can adjust the rotation of these. It doesn't adjust the shadow. Actually, it has its own um, shadow option there. So, uh, I mean, again, if you want that, you can. I don't know if I'd ever use that. Um, anyway, maybe I will. <laughs> and then you also have cavity, which to me feels just like ambient occlusion. It's putting a very subtle fade effect where you've got um, objects that are, yeah, closer to other objects. And I guess you've got um, like, is it is it darkening the inside or is it brightening up the edges there? Let's see. Yeah, it's brightening up the edges. So it's kind of like it's it's cavity and AO together. That's what it feels like to me. Mm. Um, anyway, I actually like I like that because that's even easier to understand the space that you're working with. Um, very cool. Um, oh, by the way, I didn't talk about this in the last video. What does right-click actually do? Well, it gives you an object-specific pop-up menu. Smooth shading, flat shading, right? Uh, and if you've got a lamp here select, you could change the radius of your lamp um, or whatever, but yeah. It's like, it's easy to find now. Like you, that's sort of where you would expect it to be, right? In a little pop-up menu. Uh, so that's cool. Um, anyway, that just about does it for all the uh, the viewport options. So we've got wireframe, we've got, uh, we've got solid view. We didn't talk about look dev actually. Okay, so look dev is, um, is actually using the EV renderer. So we're gonna get to that in the next video, but it's using the EV renderer and it's not using any of the world lights so this light here has no effect on it if you did want it to you could enable scene lights and then you would actually have that um, but what it's doing is it's just giving you an hdr environment so if you, this object was reflective for example um, if we made this metallic at roughness zero you would see the hdr in it so it's just going to be disregarding all the lights in your scene it's going to show you your material right so this can be handy if, yeah, you're working on a character, you've got the materials, and you just wanna see how it's gonna look visually without having to worry about setting up lighting and reflection maps and all that. You can just jump into look dev mode and see how it's gonna look. Um, you can change the HDR there as well if you wanted to. I've got some default ones, no doubt from Greg Zahl, <laughs> HDRI Haven, um, CC0, so I'm sure Blunder jumped on that. Um, yeah. So that's, that's look dev mode. And then finally, we have um, the rendered mode, which if you've got the uh, cycles turned on here in your render engine, it will be what you're already familiar with. But by default, you will have EV, which is this. Dun, dun, dun. Very cool. So in the next video, I'll go over EV in more detail. Go ahead and click on that video and watch and learn about EV. I'll keep doing this again. No, all right, I'll just see you in the next video.